Hello, Desert Bearhawk fans. Uh, in the shop tonight. It's been a been a solid week since I've done any kind of reasonable update. Um, traveling out of town. Like I said, I took a break last weekend because it's just got the heat has gotten me worn down. But we got after it today, and um, thought I'd just do a little progress video for you. Uh, not much to show. We had visitors in the shop today. Um, Hopefully I entertained them well and that they don't think that I've completely lost my mind. But they were here and I showed them what I was doing. and So that was part of my day. And then the rest of it I spent putting these nose ribs in right here. This is the left wing nose ribs. I got all the way up to uh, 12, number 12. And then of course, number 11 needs to be fitted around the wing strut straps. So I need to do that. I also have to fit the uh, spacer bar and the 90 degree attach angle here at rib station number nine for this wing. And uh, then finish putting on the nose ribs all the way down. Should be a piece of cake. I'm starting to run out of Coleco, so I'm getting creative with that. Uh, one other thing I did today is I, um, you can see over there, I got my flat push rod installed and the springs installed. Um, the push rod is not in its location where it would actually be located once the, the build is final. It's just kind of flopping right there. Um, this wing here, I actually have it down through where it's supposed to be. Um, I'm just mocking it up. You can see that I put the rubber, rubber bumpers on the tube, the support tube, and that rubber bumper allows this to bottom on there and not, you know, not damage things. I don't know if I can move this for you, but basically these, this whole assembly here is going to rotate when you turn the um, when you turn the uh, the lever down here, so uh, you know flaps flaps down will be this way like so, and then flaps up will be this way. And this lever this lever mechanism now is in the flaps up position. So the rubber bumper is there just to keep metal on metal contact from happening. Um, so I mock that up. Um, I have all of the center ribs on the left wing are all drilled into position now and clecoed with number 30s. Um, I did number 41s over there, or number 40s I should say. Um, and the reason I did 40s there and 30s here is because the pilot holes are 40s and I'm running out of clecos. So those are going to have to all be upsized to number 30. So I'm going to have to go through that whole, that whole thing again on the center ribs. Um, as you can see on the uh, nose ribs over there, I did drill those to a 30, so they're done pretty much. Oh, dropped the phone there. So uh, moving along, everything seems to be coming along pretty good. I really got this. Uh, I really got this lined up just really nicely. It seems to be working really well. Of course, now that I've put this assembly on there and the springs, it's kind of Put some drag on it it doesn't turn as freely but you know i guess that's to be expected there's a lot of load there those springs are the springs are pretty stout you know it's funny because i remember talking to some bear, bear hawk builders a couple of years ago and they said they didn't like the spring the spring uh hold the flap up situation because the springs basically the flaps are mechanically driven down and they're held up by these springs they said yeah the flaps will bounce when you're taxing well i gotta tell you that those springs are pretty stout and I don't I just don't know how those things are gonna bounce when you're taxiing so I guess we'll find out you know of course now the complaint is is that you know on these real steep short finals into a grass strip the guys are having a hard time getting the last notch of flaps because it's too hard to pull in too physically hard so they're looking for some mechanical advantage so I guess you can't win for losing either you have enough spring pressure to hold them up so they don't flop around or you have enough mechanical leverage or lower spring pressure to drive them down. But either way, it'll all work out. So that's where we are. Um, like I said, did a little shop tour today. I think the thing they were most amazed about is the, the small space I'm working in. Um, I know people have done it in smaller spaces than I'm doing it, so um, I'm grateful for what I have, but I wish I had another 2,000 squares. So. Anyhow, next time you see an update, we'll, we should have all these ribs in, in place. We should have the support mechanism for this, uh, this uh, flap bearing tube. You can see that I have it in over there. 
And uh, hopefully we'll start on the uh, false spar for the tank bays. I've got the aluminum, there's the box right there from Spruce. And uh, we'll be cutting those, I'll probably cut those Friday so I can work on them over the weekend. All right, there's the update. Um, for those of you who are in Oshkosh, I'm jealous. Wish I was there, but I'm going next year for sure. And uh, maybe two years from now, we'll be flying this thing to Oshkosh and camping under the wing. Um, like I said, I got a line on an engine. It's got an interesting history. I don't want to reveal it just yet, but if I can actually secure this engine, and I don't know how the heck I'm going to do that, but if I can pull it off, um, it'll be, it'll be kind of neat to be able to tell the story of where the engine came from and who used to own it and what it used to fly around in. So there's one guy out there on my page who knows that history. So mum's the word for now. Don't tell anybody. And then if we can make it happen, um, I'll tell, I'll tell the story. So until then, uh, we'll see you in the shop.